divergent concept of artificial intelligence. But uh, a deeper level, we're, we're discussing uh, machine learning. And they are, they are actually novel predictors when we have some hidden layers and it's not as easy as AI, uh, we need to use some other classifiers, including support vector machines or random fires or Bayesian networks to, to do more in-depth analysis of the data. And as for neural networks, we have different types of neural networks, including artificial uh, neural networks, convolutional neural networks. Uh, these are uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, models or neurofunctional models that are kind of mimicking the interchange of information between the neurons. And, and that's how complex, automated, and intricate it is the exchange of the data within systems. Sometimes we have hidden layers. So when we have one hidden layer, then we're discussing uh, neural networks, artificial neural networks. But when the number of the hidden networks are, ex are exceeding uh, then two, three, or even more, we gotta be thinking about machine learning and uh, the extent of the, the issue is deep learning. Uh, so these are the overview of the, of the terms that we'll be uh, discussing about today as we're navigating through the talk. Uh, and on the right side, you'll see that, uh, yeah, we have the EMR data and image genetic electrophysiological data. So the electronic medical uh, records are something that we are, uh, that we're accessing them as the, the repertoire for the data that we're going to manage. So many of my colleagues, including uh, Professor Proshan and other colleagues that we have been collaborating so far, we're interested in, in working on the data management. So those, those of my friends are predominantly data scientists. So they have access and uh, uh, they do this machine learning inputs and they would expect the output. And they are using the uh, like a screening, diagnosis, treatment uh, the data and then they will go for the back and forth uh, interpretation of those data. When, when we're discussing, when we're having a closer look to the, the implications of AI and machine learning in health research and medical health services, we see that over the past four years, over, over the four years of the course of the study that they have done the, the research 2013 to 2017, it was shown that neoplasms and oncology was the main and leading field where scientists use AI and machine learning in disease prediction and also prognosis. Uh, in the second place, it comes uh, the, the CNS, a nervous system. And fortunately, this is, this is the area of the expertise and also the, the area of, of focus that we're gonna talk about it today. So it's been not only our focus, but over the past several years, many scientists have been using uh, AI and machine learning in diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up surveillance of neurological diseases. So on the next level, we'll see that cardiovascular, urogenital, pregnancy, digestive, respiratory, skin, endocrine, and nutritional research, and uh, uh, clinical care service provisions are going to uh, you know, uh, be, be following the main two um, very predominant areas of, of, of research in that field. But we extended this research, as I said before, using uh, like a comprehensive search on the updated literature. And it turns out that from January 2017 to January 2021, still we have an incremental trend in using AI in medical care and medical services, and also uh, scientific research in health sciences. Uh, well, well, as for the, the kind of classifiers or uh, the, the systems that they are currently using, when we are going to proportionately see that what, uh, what are specific classifiers or, or prediction models they are being used in, in the related research, we can see that over the past four years, uh, still support vector machine SVM and neural networks are the leading uh, uh, classifiers that scientists tend to be using. Other like random virus and nearest neighbors, KNN, we, we're more interested in about uh, the, the use of uh, KNN and decision trees, 
But as, as you can see here in the data, many of the scientists are still using this uh, SVMN and uh, CNNs. So it's all about unsupervised learning, supervised learning, and semi-supervised learning. And that's uh, uh, about uh, the, the approach that we're going to feed the machine and use the computer uh, generated models and calculations to expect to predict and to uh, uh, sort of like uh, uh, verify the data. So if we're discussing just one variable and that is X, then we have unsupervised learning. Uh, the system is not fully fed for the prediction cross correlation of another set of variables like y to x. So when we're talking about supervised learning, as you can see in the middle of the slide here, uh, the story is somehow different. So we got a cross correlation between two factors. So one is gonna predict the other and they are kind of related in a specific rule or format. But when this is, this is not really one-to-one -one in terms of the size, in terms of the magnitude of the data level and also the size of the data packs that we have, we have semi-supervised learning. So uh, if we are using this, this kind of data sets uh, as the platforms to do data mining and also artificial intelligence research and application of machine learning, we can see that diagnostic imaging and image processing has been one of the, one of the main interests of the scientists for the past four years to, to apply AI in medical research. Then it follows electrodiagnostics, genetic tests, clinical laboratory, and mass screening. So bearing in mind that diagnostic imaging is one of the main things, uh, uh, we also need to figure out that over the past four years, uh, what we, we wanted to figure out, and that's why we did the extended search of the, of the earlier uh, uh, evidences. And we found out that, well, for imaging model processing, processing models and decision, decision trees, also predictive models, uh, support vector, vector machine and the neural networks, uh, still they include the majority of the approaches that have been uh, pursued by clinical scientists. Uh, you see that although that I said that we are interested in using the KNN in many of our research, but many other researchers were, were, were kind of skeptical or reluctant to use that. So that's, that's why we perhaps need to kind of rethink that maybe it's better to go for SVM rather than KNN. And random fires also, we, we, are, uh, we were interested in using Butterf Butterworth uh, systems and also the random forest uh, approaches, but it shows that in clinical uh, neural science research overall globally for the past four years, that has not been the trend. So uh, let's be with the flow. And for the genetic models, again, SVM and neural networks, they are uh, predominating the field as the preferred approach being followed by the scientists. For the electrophysiological models like MEG, EEG, and data uh, from, the, from, from the neural electrical imaging, again, the same story. And that is what we are referring to ladies and gentlemen, regarding the, the, the outline and the overall picture of the neural networks in comparison with deep learning and uh, machine learning and deep learning. So that the thing that, which is, that, that differentiates these two approaches is uh, number and the extent of the hidden layers. So when we have some inputs and we're going to predict the outputs, which are the blue and uh, orange circles here in the diagram the illustrations, there are some things in the middle that they are not clearly uh, identified. So we, do, we have a gray box there. We, don't, we do not really know what exactly is happening there but we're just going to teach the system over and over again. We're making inputs, expect output, and then we're going to see the outcome. Again, input, output, and outcome. We might not know exactly what is happening there within the hidden layers, but what we know is that these hidden layers are uh, kind of uh, you know, 